Hey guys, Paul Salmon here. I'd like to talk to you guys about uh, practicing hovering. Um, if you're practicing hovering, let's say you're a flight instructor and you're practicing hovering with a student, or you're a student by yourself practicing hovering, or you're a private pilot and just want to get some hover practice, you're always much better off to do that over a solid surface, such as the uh, paved ramp, and not overside. Uh, let me show you an example of what can happen if you're hovering overside and uh, uh, the aircraft gets away from you just a bit here. So, Megan had a student was flying with this morning. Uh, you'll notice that the stinger goes up in here and now broken off. And what happened was they were doing some hover work and a little bit too low to the ground. Started sliding backwards and tail came down. You'll notice there's some dirt at the end of the stinger where it actually got it into the ground. And that was enough to uh, actually break off the stinger. So, stinger mounts up inside of here. You can see this hole here. And there's a block that it actually needs two bolts go through over to this side. So, this assembly has to be taken off. You do have two creases. One you can see here around this rivet here. You see that little crease and then a crease right here where my thumb is right there so the lower part of the horizontal stabilizer is going to have to be replaced for sure i don't see anything else that was damaged luckily it didn't didn't get the uh, tail rotor tail rotor blade didn't get into the ground didn't break off the stinger and looking down the tail boom i'm not seeing any particular uh, damage to the tail boom at all We'll get it all cleaned up, look at everything real close, make sure there's no uh, nothing else damaged. If you crease part of the tail boom, if you get a dent or a crease in part of the tail boom, you have to pull the tail boom off, send it out to Robinson. They actually disassemble the tail boom, replace that section where the crease is, put it in a jig, re and, you know, replace the skin, repaint it. And that is a pain in the ass because it takes several weeks to get it fixed. You know, ship the tail boom out, get them to repair it, ship it back to you, put it on. And during that six or eight weeks, that can be, you know, thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars in lost income. So something as minor as you think of breaking the stinger off would be a big, big deal if you deformed the tail boom and had to have it repaired. So anyway, we'll go through everything, look at everything real close, get some port parts ordered, and see about getting it back in the air. So there's a choke a horse list <laughs> of things that you have to do with the aircraft it's not just as simple as pulling the lower vertical off and putting a new lower vertical on in a stinger there's a significant number of inspections that have to be done uh, according to the maintenance man you just look it up i'm not going to bore you guys with all the lists of things that you have to look at but there's several items that have to be inspected and make sure that nothing is cracked or damaged or some dye penetrant thing that have to be looked at and so anyway, there's a lot more than just simply taking off the lower vertical and the stinger and sticking a new one on. So I'm going to show you guys um, how the um, uh, tail rotor, how close the tail rotor is uh, to the level of the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer. They're essentially level from each other. And in this particular accident, it's, uh, they're just very, very lucky that the tail rotor didn't get into the ground. If you got the tail rotor into the ground, you took out the tail rotor, and you know the thing's going to rapidly spin to the right. Um, the procedure for loss of a tail rotor at a hover basically is to basically snap the throttle closed and essentially do a hovering auto uh, to you know cushion your landing. Well, guess what? If you're overside, chances are it's gonna the skids are gonna grab and the thing is gonna go over on its left. It's gonna rotate right and roll over on its left side. If you're on pavement, you got at least a fighting chance that if you snap the throttle off and you're able to do a uh, hovering auto, that there's a very good chance that the aircraft may just slide around and not go over on its side. If you leveled across from the bottom of the vertical, I got a level on here and right there is level. Right there is level. Notice that I'm on the right on the tail the bottom of the tail rotor blade. So the tail rotor blade essentially is level even with the bottom of the vertical. I'm installing the new vertical, the lower vertical stabilizer. I have to put it on, rivet this uh, 
bracket right here into place and then take it back off and paint it and then reinstall the uh, component on the aircraft. Got our uh, new uh, virtual stabilizer, the lower uh, virtual stabilizer with uh, Emron last night. Had it hanging up over here to dry. Should be able to get it on the aircraft today and uh, get it back uh, flying again. Okay, so what did we learn from this video? <laughs> we learned that if you're going to be if you're going to be hovering, it's going to be best to do that over pavement. Um, you know, if you're over side, uh, the risk are just much higher if, if uh, you end up touching down. You'll notice that the tail skid is designed that if you're sliding forward, especially on pavement, it really doesn't do much. It scratches the bottom of the tail skid. That's about it. It slides okay. On pavement, even going backwards, if you were to touch down, would likely just slide and, and scratch the bottom of the tail skid. Again, even if you do that, there are some inspections that need to be done. But if you're overside, and as you well know, if you start... If you're in the hover and you got your nose into the wind, if you start to drift forward, the aircraft will, will start to climb slightly. If you start to drift backwards because of decreased airflow across the rotor disc, the, the uh, aircraft is going to want to settle slightly. So, you know, it's it's a done deal. If you're overside and you're drifting backwards, it's a recipe for sticking to getting the uh, tail skid stuck right in the ground and breaking it off and uh, doing considerably more damage than would occur if you just or over pavement and slid the thing along that's about it so hope this uh, video was helpful and i uh, hope give some information that you could use and if you haven't already please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video